you know, what I heard, Austin Eckler seeking a trade, or what? how would you put that language? Because, you know, when I read, like, hey, Austin Eckler's been given permission to seek a trade, like, some of that, some of that language is so, it, it just sounds like, it, if you don't know about you and your setup in LA, it sounds like, oh, there's something wrong. Uh, right. How would you classify the situation you're in? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's actually really important to kind of put out there that it's not like, Oh, I hate the Chargers, and I need to get out of this organization, and and I need to leave. Like that's that's couldn't be further from the truth. Like I would like to stay if if it was under the right circumstances. Um, and obviously, I have one more year on my contract there, so I'm contractually obligated to play for them for this upcoming year. Um, and so we're in a situation where it's like, look, we have no guarantees or anything like that this year. So kind of in a spot where you know I've been outplaying my contract, and you know we might have an opportunity to go seek out other options you know, um, that can, can bring me up if, cause you know, that was, it was put out there that the chargers kind of put a block on the talks of extension. And so I was like, okay, well, if, if, if you don't see me in your long-term future right now, then give us the opportunity to go talk, talk and see if someone else might. Um, so that's how I see it. It's literally has no, I, nothing to do with the, the relationship. Like, like I've great, made a great relationship there, like grown there. That's where I was. That's where I started. Right. And so I want to be there. Um, but on the right terms, because I know, look, I can't play forever. You know, I think I could play for a long time, um, just the way I play and the way I treat myself and my mentality. You know, there's not a lot of five eight running backs doing what I'm doing, and there's a there's a reason behind that. Is it's more so mostly right here. Um, you know, you know, been you know able to you know skirt um, the injury bug. But for me, it's like okay, if there's an opportunity to get more value, then why would you not? Um, jump on that yeah you know like why would you not do, go at least try out the options yeah. um in the worst case scenario it's not even the worst case really but okay go play on the last year deal in la um then become a free agent what would a team i mean like what would you be is it just compensation or is it just like a mixture of all these factors for me it's like look uh i've been playing in la six years um if it was a different city I, like I wouldn't care. Like I really don't care the city I play for. I know whatever team that I'm on, I'm going to bring value. You need me to catch the ball. You need me to run the ball. I'm obviously going to score you a bunch of touchdowns. Like that, that's not going to be the issue. So I'm, I'm pretty much a plug and play to, I feel like any type of organization. Um, and so there's no, right now I, I don't really have that, that freedom. I don't have that freedom to think of that yeah. because I'm so pigeonholed. Yeah. Um, and so I haven't really thought, cause I'm not a free agent. Yeah. I'm not a free, if I'm a free agent, then it's like, okay, like, let's look at, you know, let's look at the free agent survey that we made. Let's mm -hmm. look at, you know, all these other factors that play into it. But right now it's like, okay, who has the situation right now? Because they would have to trade picks for me and restructure. Mm -hmm. um, who's willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Really? That, that's the only thing I, I don't have an option. There's no other yeah. option. Yeah. And what's the timeline of that thing? Is it just like kind of, uh, all throughout the off season, or is there a time in your mind where it's like, hey, if something doesn't get done, I got to mentally move on, and so to speak, I got to stay where I am mentally? Because uh, I, I would imagine the the mental limbo of it is is tough. Even though you're like really smart and you're on it, it's I, it's I hate not knowing what's in front of me. You know, like I used to hate that as a player and the whole thing. But this is a time where yeah. you can do that. So how long does that stretch for you? I mean. There's no, there's no, I feel like there's no timeline on yeah. it. Like, yeah. look, man, like I'm, I'm so underpaid right now yeah. as far as my contract and what I contribute to the team. It's like, I am, I am relentlessly pursuing this. Like yeah. I, I want to get something long-term done. I want a team that wants me long-term. Yeah. Right. Cause look, I I'm at the peak of my game, right? Like yeah. I'm, I'm going to score you another 20 touchdowns. As long as I'm healthy, I'm going to score you 20 touchdowns. I'm going to have, you know, another 1,600 all-purpose yards. Yeah. Right? I'm getting half my value of what I could be getting. Yeah. Right? So it's like I am relentlessly pursuing someone who wants me for the long term. How, so how old are you? Like 27, 28? I'm 27 right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you got some good years ahead of you, especially the way you put it. Like, you play the game differently. And I kind of wonder what you think about, you know, the value of running backs and the way that kind of bell cow concept's going away. And then also, like, the way they're franchising, it feels like everybody this offseason, uh, we had a few names, uh, Barkley, a um, couple guys yeah, got man. franchised, like, w w d d Brandon, or uh, not Josh Jacobs, uh, I'm Josh thinking of Brandon Jacobs. Jacobs, that was a big-ass running back from my day, but, um, like, what, what, what's your mindset on that, and, like, how do you feel like that, that running back position is being undervalued if, if it is? Bro, it's, it's brutal out here, man. Yeah. Like, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. As far as the running back market and how we're getting treated right now. Yeah. Um, and look, I get it. Like, I, I 100% get it. Like, 
there is more risk within paying running backs. But when you have a running back that makes it through the season, is able to contribute, like it's so much value to your team and gives you so much more depth to what you yeah. can do as an offense. Um, that like it's like there's more value than what I think has been given out to um, you know some of these guys you talk about get franchised, um, and so. It's also been unfortunate because of some of the bigger injuries to some of these guys. And so I get it, you know, and I've been I've been thinking about ways. I'm like, man, is it like a different is it like is it like what is it like shorter contracts? Like what do we got to do to get paid as running backs to our actual value and not just be getting like, you know, a few mil when we're out here. Like I said, literally scored 20 touchdowns last year, 1600 all purpose yards. Right. Like and I can't get an extension. You're like, you don't want me here. Like, yeah. Like, wait a minute, I'm, am I missing something here? I'm, like, what am I missing? So it, it's confusing and frustrating at the same time. Well, it's uh, almost like you should be classified different. You. It, like, than yeah. just the running back. You know what I mean? Because of everything yeah. you do in the past game. And obviously, like, when you talk about value of a team, red zone is so important. And anytime I'm watching the Chargers, I'm like, all right, get the ball to Austin. Like, we're down here on the goal line. Yeah. I feel good about our chances. Yeah. Yeah, the Royal exactly. Hour chances. <laughs> I'll say maybe I'm gambling. Yeah, you, you, would think, you would think a team would, um, you would think a team would value that, but yeah. you know, um, yeah. apparently we don't value it on the same levels from our perspective in there. So, what, what do you think what? about Kellen Moore? Because does I mean, like, did, would that excite you if you stuck around? Yeah, man, I'm so excited to come back. Yeah, you know, like as far as playing the actual game, yeah. like. Like, I'm ready to go back. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Like I said, I'm ready to go score another 20 touchdowns for this organization, get us back to the playoffs because we got some unfinished business. Yeah. You saw what happened to us in Jacksonville. Like, and that's still yeah. – wherever I am, I'm bringing that same energy. Yeah. Like, th these boys better be ready because I got, I got 27 to 0 on my mind and we lost that game. And we got to get back. Right? We got to get back because we have so much more, especially with the Chargers, so much more on the plate that we can go out there and do. We have so much more talent. We should have made a way deeper run. Right? Yeah. We had way too much – way too many inconsistencies. Right, way too many inconsistencies. And some of it came down to injuries, things like that. Some of us, you know, just growth in some of our players. And so it's like, look, we got. I'm putting pressure. All pressure is on 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 everyone, it, whatever team I'm on. Yeah. You know, if it's a Chargers, so be it. I'm bringing that energy. And so Kevin Kellen, I'm I'm excited. Right, this guy's a guy who's been there, done that, had a successful season. So hopefully he's going to bring some more consistency to us. Um, and nothing against Joe. Yeah, shoot, I scored 40 touchdowns under Joe. Right, we barely missed the playoffs the year before. Got back in this mm -hmm. year. Um, so. You know, I loved having Joe there. Um, and so now Kellen's going to come in. I'm excited again. And I don't think he's had a player quite like you. So that's, that's, uh, that'd be a really fun marriage. That, that, that 27 nothing. you brought it up, not me. I mean, I was going to bring it up, but I know that I, I don't know that feeling. Like I've been on the other side of a big comeback, um, you know, 28 to three, um, you know, 27 nothing. That was a game I'm watching. And I'm thinking, hey, the Jags are dead. Um, when, when that final right. whistle, blue and you got to get on that plane ride we we often give out like a worst plane ride here um on our show like that had to be the worst plane ride of the year and i just for people that don't know what it's like sure. to get on a plane after a game like that like paint me a picture of how people are feeling i know it's terrible yeah, but yeah. color it in man after that game like i mean just even in the locker room just like in disbelief of like what just happened like you know the the wtf feeling that is it feels like there's a hole inside of you like, like there's something like something was just taken out and you can't, you don't know what you need to fill it with. You just feel like you're just like, like you're almost like want to throw up, but you, you're not throwing up, but you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. like how, like what, you know? And so that's as best as I can describe it. And just that basically was riding the entire, like we just ended the season too. Now, I, you know, I got to go dab my boys up about like, Hey, good seat. Like, like exit like, meetings. Matt, do it. It's yeah, it was it was tough. It was a tough scenario uh, where it's like, man, like I appreciate the work everyone put in, but it, like, it you still feel like you it couldn't end like that. Yeah. Like, like what is that? That's why it's, it's still burned. It's like it's like branded on me, you know, like that. It's branded into me. Like, oh, like oh, I can like we got to get back, man. 